One of the main questions that I get from emerging professional readers is, how am I going to find and attract clients that I actually want to work with? Are people going to even buy the readings that I have to offer? Are people going to resonate with what I'm giving to the world? How do I get started? I have been where you are, so I totally get this. My name's Emily Rose. I'm a professional Lenormand and tarot reader, and I also teach tarot readers and the mystically minded to read Lenormand cards. They're sassy and to the point, like they're talking to a friend. And today I'm going to share with you how I routinely fill up my reading calendar. This video is going to be for you if you're someone who is thinking about going pro, but you're not quite sure what that is fully going to entail, how to even get started, and you're also kind of wondering, can I truly do this? If you're someone who is wanting to help people, doing something that you love to do, and making some money while you're at it, then welcome. This video is for you. I'm going to share in this video how I got started in my reading business about seven years ago and how now it is pretty easy for me to fill my reading calendar. I'm going to share with you exactly how I do that and how I got to the point that I'm at. And I'm also going to share some of the mistakes I feel like I made earlier on. I'm kind of one of those people that doesn't really believe there are mistakes that you learn things along the way. But if I was to go back to that time period, I would share with you what I would do differently than how I did it. And I'm also going to share with you what is important to focus on when you're starting your card reading business and what not to focus on as much because there is just so much noise especially in the online intuitive business space, online business generally, and it's really hard to know where to focus. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to do that via my journey. So I'm excited to share this with you. And I hope that you get so many amazing tidbits along the way and the ideas and the juices are just flowing so that when you go to attract those clients, you know where to get started, what to focus on, and you have some added confidence in the mix. If you are resonating with what I'm saying so far and you're thinking, yep, that sounds like me and that sounds good, I have a free workshop for you that is coming up very soon. So I'd like to tell you about that before we dig into the video. If you're ready to share your gifts to the world and make additional income this year, join me in my free workshop on January 20th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. We are talking about an approachable, customizable way to start your card reading, astrological, or other forms of intuitive business. I'll show you exactly what you need to focus on to build the side business that can bring you additional meaning and profit into your life this year. Whether you're just starting to think about going pro or you've been trying for a while and you're just not sure where to focus your energy, I got you. So join me Saturday, January 20th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Pacific time. If you can't make it live, no worries. Be sure to register anyway and I'll send you a recording. You can register for this workshop at emilyrosedivination.com slash workshop. See you then. Really the first thing I did to start attracting clients was offering readings to the people who are already in my sphere. So people who are already around me, I just said, hey, I'm doing these readings. Do you want them? And I decided at that moment that the people in my sphere, that they counted. We have this weird sense that our friends don't count when it comes to our businesses. Our family doesn't count when it comes to our businesses because they're just trying to support us. But that's who we can start with. They want to support you. They're going to be really great for the initial part of building your business. And I'm just glad that I let my past self embrace that because I still read for a lot of people I read for at the beginning. A lot of them have maintained being my clients and coming back to me. 
And they have referred friends and family and friends of friends. And it's been this whole chain. If you don't have immediate, you know, friends and family that would support you in this endeavor, there are going to be communities online that would absolutely support you in that. There are so many free Facebook groups and Discord servers and things like that that you can join that could support you in this endeavor as well. When it comes to that, just know that you can get the resources that you need to start at this very basic level. So I want to give my past self so much credit and a pat on the back because I got really brave and I told a lot of people in my life, friends, family, anyone in my immediate sphere, hey, I am going to become a professional reader. I'm on that path right now. Would you be willing for me to give you a reading in exchange? I am accepting donations and I would love your feedback. So that is really the first point that I have here that worked for me in starting my professional card reading business is that I accepted where I was at the time. And some of the mantras I kind of heard myself saying then is, Where I am is exactly where I need to be, and I have everything that I need to take my next step towards my goals. And those things are absolutely true if you really think about it. Whatever your next step is for your goals, you can work towards it. Even if it's getting ready or acquiring materials to do that next step, you have them available to you. That leads me to kind of the second phase of my business building and attracting clients that I love to work with. And that second phase was me getting really messy and there's so many things I would do differently if I could go back because I think I would have gotten further faster. And so I'm going to tell you the biggest mistake I made and I'm also going to share with you one of the best things that I did in my business. Let's start with the mistake. (laughs) So the biggest mistake that I made was trying to do too many things at once. I totally got caught up in the rabbit hole of, you know, I I call it um, bro marketing online, (laughs) where you fall into this trap of trying to build out systems right away in your business, like doing funnels and lead magnets and blah, 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 blah. And though I got trapped in building a website and making sure I had the perfect wording on my website. Yes, I'm sure some of those things, you know, helped my business in some way. But if I could go back, I wouldn't do any of that at that phase. (laughs) What I would focus on instead is something that I only put a little bit of effort in. And then I started pouring more energy and effort and watering that area of my business way more once I saw how much it yielded. And that's what I'm going to share with you next. So the second thing that I did that really helped me build a phenomenal client base was to start an email list. Now, why is this so important? You hear the word email list and you might think bro marketing, (laughs) right? Those types of things that feel like a little, but my email list, it was very basic. I literally had an Excel spreadsheet with people's emails that I had read for. That was my email list. I didn't have anything fancy at the time. And what I started doing is every reading I did, I would make sure to get that person's email with their consent, of course. And what I would do is start sending out weekly or I think I started monthly and then I moved to weekly emails to folks. And at the same time, I had started reading for people at in-person events in the Portland area. I started reading also at New Renaissance Bookstore in Portland. You have to audition to get in there. That was a whole nerve-wracking experience, but I auditioned, I got in, and what I started doing was carrying a sign-up sheet to these events and saying, okay, here you go, (laughs) sign up with your email. And it was totally up to them if they wanted to do that or not. But I started keeping this email list and what I found was that I could start actually just directly starting conversations with people. I feel like this is something that we kind of forget about in our world now because in the digitized world, we don't have a lot of like 
personal connections with the, with people and with businesses and things like that. But I just literally started sending emails each week like, hey, I have this many reading slots this month. And then I would include something like, here's like a forecast I did this week. And at this point, I had like 20, 30 people on my email list. I did not have very many people, but it worked. <laughs> I had people that would come back to me and we had a genuine connection and conversation. And I think that's something that's also missed is that we can have conversations with our clients. We can literally just ask them questions of, okay, what was helpful to you about this reading? Okay, what would you change if you could about this reading? I would ask them things like, what are you craving for support in your life right now? I would just literally ask them questions that I was wondering about and looking genuinely at ways that I could support them. And that is what I did right <laughs> in the next phase of my business. I got small and mighty and I really focused on nurturing the people that were already in my sphere. A good way to think about it is even if you only have, you know, clients like you've only read for 20 people, but you have those 20 people's emails, think about it. Like that's like if you had... 20 people at a party in your house. <laughs> That's a lot of people. I think I got that metaphor from Jenna Kutcher at some point, but it is just such a good metaphor because when you really think about it, it's like, that's a lot of people. And when we get in the numbers game with things, we can think 20 people is not that many people. But if you send 20 emails, you're probably going to get an email back if you're asking for advice or if you're asking for their opinion on something or you're just asking about someone's day. That is so different than what a lot of people tend to do. A lot of, you know, online businesses, they send these mass things and whatever. But if you can form a personal connection, especially at the beginning part of your business, then you are going to form a genuine connection that lasts a long time. A lot of the people that I read for at the beginning, I still read for to this day. So the thing I did wrong, which there isn't really a wrong, but the mistake I made was focusing on technology, focusing on building a website, having the perfect words on my website and making sure my social media always had a post every day and, th and things like that. What I found is, yes, those things can be great to have in your business later on. Typically what's going to move your business forward is having genuine connections with people that want to come back and read for you again. Also, something I didn't state is being a good reader, <laughs> right? So learning from the readings that you do is also very important. So I'll pop the link here, but I do have a client IQ worksheet that does help you make the most of your practice readings. So I have included that here and you can find it emilyrosedivination.com slash client IQ. Now let's move into kind of the third phase of my business and I'm going to skip over a number of things here because of time. But for this third phase of my business, I was probably making about one to two thousand dollars a month in my business as a side hustle. This was a side business. It was not my full time business. I still had a full time muggle job while I was doing this. I worked in higher education. I was feeling really great about where things were at, but I was doing too many things. I was also building up the website that you see now as emilyrosedivination.com with every Lenormand card on there. I was loco. Like, what was I doing? <laughs> now I'm grateful to have that, but it definitely at the same time of building a client base too, it was too much. That being said... I started to get really curious about the people that I, I had. So I started learning about how to survey people with what they were interested in. And I also experimented a lot in terms of the type of, of reading I was giving to people. So I started offering, getting more specific with the types of offerings I had. Because when you think about a one hour reading, most people do not know what that actually entails, right? If you're a reader, you might have an idea, but everybody reads differently. So I decided to start focusing on the main issues that people had in their life 
and creating readings around that. And that was also a smart decision. Good job, past self. So if you name a type of reading, I probably did it. So I did email readings. I did live Zoom readings, which is still what I do now. I love live Zoom readings. I um, did audio readings, recorded readings. I did in-person readings. I've done a lot of different kinds of readings and I also focused on particular issues. So I used to have like a love reading that I would offer focused on people who were single and were looking to find their ideal partner. I did career readings focused on people who were really feeling stuck at their job. I did things like this and when people could look at it, they could say, oh wow, that's me. And that's when I really discovered that people don't like, yes, people do care about what you do and how you do it, but mostly they care that you're going to be able to help them with an issue that they have or that you're going to help them feel better. So the more specific you can be about what a reading can do to help somebody, the more likely they are to to purchase that. So that was really smart at the time. And that helped me build an additional client base. I started having more and more people coming to me. And that is something when I do feel like I want to attract new clients, or I'm just curious about working with a particular, a particular area. I'm really interested in the concept of purpose. So I've done sessions around that recently. And so this is something I still employ in my business a lot. And that is something that when I want to attract new clients or when I'm curious about something, I will create specific offerings. If you go on my website now, you will see um, a one hour reading or a grand tableau offering on there right now. And those offering it in that way is, yes, I do get new people on there now, but it's not going to bring in people in droves typically. What tends to do that is having a more specific offering. So now that I have a pretty full client load, I'm not as worried about attracting new folks, but when you're in that kind of attraction phase, that is something that you're gonna wanna do is to have a very specific offerings that speak to specific problems. So that is kind of my my point here is that having something specific that speaks to people's specific issues or things that they're hoping to feel better about in their life, that is going to be very helpful in attracting people. And that is something I did right. (laughs) There's a lot of things that I, I did that I would do differently now, as I mentioned, but that is one thing I did right. The next thing that I think is really important to attracting people and keeping them in your sphere is being very consistent. And you don't have to be consistent in absolutely everything that you're doing, but being consistent with my email list has been something that builds trust with the people I'm working with. And it builds trust because it's genuine, right? I'm genuinely checking in with people on my email list. I'm making sure that I'm making contact with them and I'm giving them value And a lot of times they're not having to do anything to to get that value, right? It's free. So at the time, I did have some things going on on my website that was bringing in new, new people. A lot of them weren't getting readings, though. They were interested in Lenormand and Lenormand content. But what did bring people back again and again was consistent emails that they were getting from me. And these are readings that added value to people's lives. So they were getting that value in their inbox and they were able to see, oh, okay, this actually helped me and that built some trust. So that was another really important piece is being consistent and showing up for the people that you have. Now I'm kind of giving you the highlight reel here and obviously there's more than what I'm mentioning here. So make sure that you are signed up for my workshop. I have included the link here and it is also down below in the description. So now that I had a really robust foundation of clients that had been through referrals and friends of friends and I had done in-person events and gotten their emails at these in-person events so I can stay in touch with them, that's when I started realizing I don't need millions of people. I don't need to go viral (laughs) in order to have a successful business. Really, I just needed a very core set of clients that I continued to show up for. And 
that eventually snowballed into these clients asking me, can I learn those cards? Because they are so dang accurate. (laughs) And that is when I started my Lenormand Foundations course. Many of you may be here because of that. And that, that course did change a lot of things for me and it was fantastic, but it started from truly listening to what my clients wanted from me and listening to what they were curious about. So I started letting people in a little bit to how to read Lenormand and then that turned into New Renaissance saying, hey, do you want to teach Lenormand classes? And that kind of snowballed into um, the Emily Rose Divination that you see today with my Lenormand Learners Community membership and offering readings as well. That came from listening, right? (laughs) If we're really listening to what people in our sphere want, if we are giving them what it is that they are um, asking for, but it's still in alignment with what we want. Clients wanted things all the time that I wouldn't do, right? If I had an offering that said, here's when to get married, you know, exactly, or here's when you're going to get married, right? I would have a line out the door, but I would not be happy, right? And so it's important that you find things that feel like they are in integrity to you. So it was at this point that I started building my um, course while also growing how many people I was reading for. And it started to get to a point where I could see where I could quit my muggle job. And I am now a full-time reader and teacher, but I did not do that overnight. So that's something that I really want to impart is that you do not have to be doing this full time to see results. I was able to pay off my credit cards, doing things that I really like to do without having to get like a second soul sucking job again, because I had done that route and I thought I'm going to do something different. And I just want you to know that you can do something different too. And that kind of moves me into the fourth phase of my business, which is kind of where I am now. I feel like I'm moving into a fifth phase now. Um, But now I'm in a phase where I'm able to fill up my calendar very easily. Uh, For this past month, I sent out, I think, a total of two emails to do it. Um, One to my membership and then one to my general community in my email list. And that is so amazing to just say because I never thought (laughs) I would be able to fill up a calendar that easily. But it's because of the intention and the trust that has been built over time. And the consistency in showing up, it's the things that I have percolating online now. And don't get me wrong, I know I said before I wouldn't have focused on social media. That is important to have at some point. Obviously, I have this YouTube channel, which is where I choose to focus my energy. But what really made the difference is showing up for people consistently and picking a way that I enjoyed doing that was a big part of being able and having the ability to quit the job that I, you know, my job was okay, but I didn't love it, right? To quitting a job I didn't love to a job now that I created, literally creating your own reality into something that you truly love. And now it doesn't feel like I'm getting up to go to work, right? I'm excited about what I'm doing. I'm able to show up authentically me without having to put on a facade and that is just something I'm so grateful for and that's one of the main reasons I'm creating this video is to help other intuitive people, people who have gifts that they want to bring out to the world, have the confidence to do it, have the know-how to do it, and feel supported in doing that. So now I'm making a very comfortable living doing what I'm doing. I love it. And I have clients that I absolutely adore. (laughs) Like sometimes when I'm reading for clients, I'm like, I can't believe that this is my job. It's so amazing. And I do want to emphasize, though, that when you're in the online space, there's a lot of, you know, people in this world that kind of say how easy it is to do this. I want to say it's not easy. The things that I've mostly been driving home in this video is showing up and being consistent and being authentic. And that kind of goes against the energy of what 
I know I've been taught about business my whole life. And when people a lot of times say things like, oh, I feel like I'm selling my soul if I'm in business. I feel like I've done the opposite. I feel like I've had to be more vulnerable. I feel like I've had to be more open. I feel like I've had to be more authentic into who I am because in our world, people know if you're not being authentic, if you're not being who you truly are, people are going to sniff that out really fast. And it's just not a sustainable way to run your life or your business. So I feel like this has been a very spiritual path for me. It's been a path of taking criticism from people. It's been a path of listening to my inner voice and getting right with myself. And what I found is that every time I sit in silence, listening to what I think the next right step is or the next best step is, I can hear it in my heart every time. And that is what led me to start making videos about this topic. So I just want to say that if this is appealing to you, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, yes, I want more of this, you kind of feel yourself kind of grooving a little bit to it. That's a sign that your body is saying, yes, I I want this kind of experience for myself. And that is why I have this workshop coming up and I hope that you will join me in it. It's going to have so many good tidbits. I just can't wait for it. Let me share those details with you one more time. 